with the anointing that you say, you drink. Let it now rain. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Um, first of all, I thank God for this great opportunity. I also thank the, the man of God who trusted me today to be a speaker. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate this great opportunity to share the word of God. I also thank all of us who are here today to hear the word of God. Okay, um, I would like you to work with me because there will be so many things I would like you to respond with me. If I say something, if I ask you to do something, please do so. Is one of the things we, we work together today. Okay. And we go to our Bible from the book of uh, Revelation chapter 1. The book of Revelation chapter 1. We are starting from verse 4. Was written 
in three major languages. The first language the Bible is written from is the language they call Hebrew. The second language is Aramaic. And the third language is Greek. The Bible has never been written in English. Not in French, not in Swahili, not in Chiluba, and so on and so forth. It's only those three languages that the Bible was written. And the Bible is divided in two major segments. The first one is the Old Testament, and the second one is the New Testament. What we just read is found in the second portion of the Bible called the New Testament. The first book that we have is called the book of Genesis. And the last book we just read is called the book of Revelation. <coughs> Genesis means beginning. And Revelation means end. Now, when you are reading, oh, my course, ready. when you are reading the book of Revelation, let me start the book of Genesis. When you are reading from the book of Genesis, you are starting to realize the I call it this way, the book of Genesis is the beginning of truth about who God is, about us, about everything he ever created. Now, when you are reading from the book of Revelation, is the last truth about God, about us, about everything he ever created. Now, if you miss God from the book of Genesis, God said, the book of Genesis revealed the first truth about me, about you, the people are ever created, about everything is contained in the world. But when you reach the book of Revelation, it's the last truth. In other words, don't miss me in the last book. If you didn't understand me from the first book, what I say about you, but when you reach to the last book, don't miss me there. Because there will not be another truth after revelation. My God. If you die, you never believe the last book. What? The last book revealed the end of the world. If you don't believe the first book that he ever created us, you never believe in the, the creation. But in the last book, if you don't believe the earth will be destroyed, that God will destroy everything. God will restore everything. And there is, there is a promise by heaven. If you don't believe the last book, you miss the point. Yes. If you die today, you never believe the last truth. There will not be another truth after revelation. Mm. My God. Uh, If you die today, without Jesus Christ be the Lord of your life, and he promised us he will come back again, he will destroy the dragon. <coughs> and the millennium will take place, the rapture will take place, is from the book of Revelation. Don't miss God in the book of Revelation. It's our last chance to understand the truth about God. Meaning, whatsoever is said in that book, we have to respond. In other words, the whole entire Bible, whatsoever you find yourself in the book, you have to respond. It's not just for reading and being happy about it. If you find something in the book talking about you, you have to respond. Testament, the Bible says, is the shadow, and the New Testament is the real thing. Amen. When you are reading the Old Testament, you need to bring the light of the New Testament in the Old Testament to understand what is there. Uh, fine. Can I borrow your light? Your glass? 
that was months ago, yeah, that was at, at the end of June, July, I can't remember. My, my mother called me, she said, um, I know find, I started to find difficulty to read and then uh, also to see a little bit far off. Meaning you cannot see from far distance. And then he said, uh, I'd like you to buy me a glasses so that I can see anything I'm, I'm reading. Whatever I want to read, I want to see properly. And I also want to see far off. And she told me something that was, she said, I'd like you to buy me a glass that will have, yeah, both sitting once. Yeah. Meaning, the same glass I can read, what, meaning, if I, if I see something is written, I can't really guess what is there. But if you buy me a glass, I can see and read. I can also, in the same glass, I can see far away. The glass will help her to see what is there. Also to see far away. The New Testament is like this glass. When you are reading the Old Testament, you need the New Testament glass to see right. what is there. Because if you take the, Bible, the book of Exodus, you try to interpret what is there. You can't really see. But when you have the New Testament in front of you, you can see behind the scripture. Himself, 
That's why it's called the firstborn from the dead. He died for us in our place. To him who loves us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Jesus Christ loves us and he died for us. He shed the blood in the cross for us. And the Bible says we were in that cross with him. And when Jesus died, we died with him. And when Jesus was resurrected, we were also raised together with him. We need to understand everything that Jesus Christ did there, it was for us. That's what the Bible said. He washed us from our sins. Verse 6. And he made us kings and priests. Now, I told you about how to respond. When you are reading something, we have to respond. Now, the Bible said he made us kings and priests. I suppose to say, I should say, Jesus made me king and priest. I have the boldness to say, I am a king. I am a priest. He said, He made us. Made is a past case. Meaning, He's already done where? In the cross. He died for me. He was buried there, resurrected. And then, He said, Now, because I'm back to life. Now I have the boldness to say to you, you are my king. Okay, can you help me now? You stand up a little bit, walk around, say to someone next to you, you are a king and a priest. Uh, I said stand up and walk around. I didn't say, I said stand up and walk around. You are a king and a priest. I, my God, it's getting better, it's getting better. You are a king. I am a Sadiqian popular. You are a king. I am a priest in the name of Jesus. You are a king. I am a priest. Ah, it's getting better. It's getting better. Ooh, glory, glory, glory. Ah, I am a king. I am a priest. I do get it. Ah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The Bible says so. I am a king and a priest to uh, to him God the Father. Jesus Christ said, before you left the planet, you are a king. I'm a priest. Meaning, I have two roles to play. The first one, a king. And the second one, I am a priest. Ah! I said, Jesus, no, 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 you forgot to do something. The Bible says in the Old Testament, if you are not from Levi tribe, you cannot be a priest. How could you say I am? He said, my son, I am the Lord of Sabbath. Yeah. Whatsoever I said you do. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I am a king and a priest. Let me show you a little bit now. I don't know. What did you tell her? No. When you look at her, Mama, say it again. What did you say to her? Okay, grammatically speaking, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Because mm -hmm. she's a woman. Yeah. She's supposed to say to her, queen. you are a queen. <laughs> and a priest. <laughs> don't shout here, don't shout here, don't shout, shout. And, and If I find you, say to a woman, you are a queen. You are making a big mistake in front of God. <laughs> Is a, is, grammar, is, a, is 
is spiritually, grammatically wrong to call the person next to you a queen. According to the Bible. Did you see that? He said, did he say, I made you kings, queens, and priests? No. There's no word of queen there. See, you need to remember when the Bible speaks about the earthly kings and the spiritually kings. Now, in that scripture, it's nothing to do with the kings of the earth. It's a spiritually commandment. God is trying to say that. Okay, let me try to pray. The one king, I told you, the Bible has never been written in English. The word king is the Greek word that means Basileus. Basileus is a, the same expression the Bible talking about a spirit. Now, when God said you are a king, he was addressing to a spirit. Do you know that you are a spirit? You have soul. And you and your soul you live in this visible body. Mm -hmm. Now, when God said you are a king, God is not looking your outside appearance. Mm -hmm. He was talking to the inner man that's inside you. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mama, inside you, there was nothing about woman. Inside this man, there's nothing about men. As far as God is concerned, when he look at you, you are a spirit. When she look at her, she is a spirit. When God gives a command, he talks to the spirit, which is inside. Now, that word, king, is referred to in the, the you inside you. Ah. Now, the woman also died. They asked 
question. What about in the resurrection? Which one of those seven brothers in the resurrection will be the wife of the woman? Jesus said, you are not very smart. He used this word. You err because you don't know the scripture and the power of God. He said, don't you know there will be all of them like angels of God. Why? Because an angel doesn't have a gender. When God said you are a king, it's not talking about a gender. No man, no female. He's talking about the spirit of inside. When you die, you will be back as a spirit without a gender. If on earth you are fighting by you, about this is mine, this is mine. In heaven, there's no yours. There's nothing about your your. Uh, <laughs> Let me show you something. Genesis chapter one. I need to move by the quick uh, the key. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, Let us make a man in our own image. Let me ask you a question. It's, what is the image of God? Okay, God is a spirit. He said, Let us make a man in our own image. Which image God? Spirit. The image of God is a spirit. And it creates us. In his own image. Which image do you have? Spirit. Ah, you have what? A spirit image. Now, when God created us, he said, I am a spirit. And then he, he said, I'll create you the same image like me. You're supposed also to be exactly like him. Because he's a spirit. When you are a spirit, God also is a spirit. The physical body is not you. Mm -hmm. This is only the house where you live. Mm -hmm. Let us ask a question. Where you live, is it is you? The house you come from now, this morning, the way you stay there. <laughs> is the house is you? <laughs> the house where you just slept no. last night is you? No. You? Actually, you go see the house and you come out of the house. When God created you, He puts you in the house. When you die, you come out. Ah. I think if I was uh, in Bangkok, they would shout it a bit more than that. Ah, my God, oh my God. The house is not you. The house that you have, this body, is the house, is the address to locate you. If I need to find where you live, I need your passport. This body is my postcode. It's not me. Brother uh, John, do you understand what I'm over there? This house is not you. Don't push against this house. It's not you. The real you is inside. It's called a king. And when God is let us make a man, that word man there is the word king. It's not men act like uh, Adam. This is not Adam. He's the king. He was not talking to Adam. He's talking about the king, which is a spirit. God is a spirit. According to our likeness, let them have them. You see, let us. I said, let them. It doesn't make sense. Let us is God. The Father, the Word, and the, the Spirit. I didn't say the Son, I said the Word and the Spirit. There's a difference between Jesus and the Word. Before He became Jesus, He was the Word. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's go another, another session. Let them have dominion. Over the fish of the sea, the bird, the cattle, 
on earth and if you're scraping up, give me verse 27. So, God created a man, a king, in his own image. In image of God created him, him that is the king. Now, that king actually came with two forms. The first form is a king male, and the second form is a king female. Are you with me? A king that God was intended to it had to come two different forms. The first form is a king, fee, the king male. The second king is a king, eh? female. Now I can say, king, female, how are you? <laughs> Just go. And he said to them, he blessed them. He said to them, who are them? Male and female. Okay? Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion. When you are a king, you need to have a kingdom to dominate. Every kingdom has a king, and the king has to dominate. If you are a king, he is a king. Everybody is a king. You have a dominion area supposed to dominate. This brother also has the kingdom you supposed to dominate. You don't dominate over him, but you have your own kingdom you supposed to rule. The area of your gift is the area of your dominion. This brother he has your own area of his kingdom that he dominates. Don't dominate me. I'm not going to dominate you. But you have to dominate the area of your gift. This brother is, you know how to speak. He's very talk. When he speaks, many people listen. That's his area of dominion. It's not my area. If somebody has got issues, if we meet this brother, he has a solution. If somebody reads me, maybe I'll find it difficult to express one, two, four words. But when you meet this brother, it just flows. <laughs> because that's the area of his influence. <laughs> I would like to, to, there are so many things about the king, what the king can do. But, I would like to pick only one thing that a king can do is the area of words. A king, there's a power in words when the king speaks. Let's see that Ecclesiastes chapter 8. There are so many things that the kings can do, but the Lord wanted to show us one thing today the power of words. As a king, we need to know when we say something, it has a power. It comes with a power. That's the way God has to do. The, the scripture says, where the word of the king is, there is a power. Where the word of the king is, there is a power. Meaning, when the king says something, there's a power behind it. Because the word power is the Greek word uh, dunamis. It actually means the ability to cause a change. I'll repeat one more time. The word power, it means the ability to cause a change. When a king says something, that word when it's come out of his mouth, that word Wherever he's going, he has the ability to cause a change. Ah. When Jesus, do you know Jesus is a king? Is our king. When Jesus says something to somebody, whatsoever comes out of his mouth has the ability to cause a change. I remember one day. He stood up in front of 
a, uh, a fig tree. He released the word of curse. The word of curse actually he was traveling, he was going to the realm of the spirits. And he said to that tree, die. The ability to cause a change. Whatsoever he said, there's a change. He see the blind man, he said, be healed. There's a change. The ability to cause a change. God wants us to function the same way as Jesus functioned. The ability to cause a change. When you pray, you need to put in your system, I have the ability to cause change. Don't just pray in vain. Don't just release the word in vain. Think about what you are saying. Think again. Before you say something, think again. Father, I take control of my house. Because I have the ability to cause Ah, I get it now. Oh my God. If you go to the new house, there's a spirit, bad spirit with that house. If the council, if you buy it, whatever, you get that house, you get into the house. As soon as you step into the king is now here. I have the ability to cause Oh my God. I'm speaking to somebody in this place. There is ability to go. Ah, it's a quote again. <laughs> Woo, glory, glory. My God. Mm. We just read it from New King James translation. I'll give you another two translations. You will love it. But before we go so, Let's go to the book of John, chapter 6. Oh my God. I must finish the sermon. Verse 63. NIV. I put the translation next to it. I'm using NIV. The spirit gives life. The flesh comes from nothing. The word that I have spoken to you are full of the spirit and life. Okay, that scripture we just read, it was Jesus talking to his disciples. He was, he was talking about something earlier. They did not understand what he was trying to say. They said, we are so troubled by the words. And he said, listen guys, the word he said, my words have spoken to you. He said, it's a full of the Spirit. The word I'm speaking to you is a full of the Spirit and full of life. That's from the lips of Jesus. The word I'm speaking to you is a full of the Spirit and full of life. What is trying to say? He said, every time I release a word, the word is traveling. When I release a word, the word is traveling. When it's traveling, you have to find its destination. God wants to prophesy to this brother. That is the destination of his word. It's not going to you. It's going to this one because he has to set his destination. He released the word to you. That's the destination. When that word reaches you, whatsoever that word found changes. The word life there you have to bring life into it. If you are cursed from your family, if you meet one of the people, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, let me use this one. If you meet the king, Maro, and Maro pronounce a word over you, that word is full 
of the spirit is traveling. When he reach you, he has to generate life. Uh, it reminds me in the story in the Bible of uh, the centurion. The centurion, he was a soldier from Rome. He, one of the servants was sick. And then they meet Jesus in the way. Jesus is going somewhere. Then they ask him, Master, please come to my house. I have a servant there. He's really, really sick. Near to that. Jesus said, Oh, really? The, the, the guy asked some, asked something. He said, I am a man under authority. I have also the soldier under my authority. If I say go, they go. If I say come, they come. Understand, you have also authority. Just say a word. That's what I need from you. Jesus didn't go with him in his house. He was talking to him somewhere far away from their house. Jesus said, let it be done to you as you wish. Jesus was not in his house. He released the word of healing to the person who was not in front of him. He just said, he's not. Whatsoever he said, he was traveling to the house. And then when he reached that place, he was locating who is sick in the house. If you find that sick person, that Lord is going to change a life. When you pray, you are in the UK. Someone is in Congo. You can say something here. He will try. Oh my father. He will go into the ocean. He will pass up Cameroon. He will go into Angola. He will travel to South Africa. He will go into the Congo. Oh my God! When the king prayed, something happened. When the king said something, he caused the realm of the spirit. Make that problem change. The power of words. When you say something, you have to believe it works. When you pray, you have to believe. The Bible says, when you pray, believe is done. Believe. You have to believe is done. It's done. Ah. Oh my God. I believe your word works. Jesus, you heal the sick. I could not believe it. He didn't lay hands. He didn't touch nothing. Just a word. Someone dead. In Zimbabwe can be here. Ah! Is it true? Jesus, is it true? Oh my God. Michael, can you jump John 3? Can you give us again Ecclesiastes chapter 8? Okay, this time we have two different translations now. The first one I give you to King James. This one now is a New Living Translation. Oh my God. I was so blessed when the Lord told me that. He said, it's the same scripture. Where the word of the king is, there is a power. Now, the same scripture, different translation said, put it this way. His command, who is his? The king. Oh. Where the word of the king is, that is, is the king. When the king commands something, he said, he is backed by a great power. Ah. <laughs> My God. God is trying to explain to me what does it mean. It means this way. He said, I will use the word of uh, a policeman. 
If you find a bond, you are driving your car. You are driving your car. And then you, you meet someone in the middle of the streets. Say like this. Stop. Pull over. The person, think about it. If you meet Papa and Ben, for instance, in the front of your car, in the middle of the streets, say to you, hey, pull over. Say, this person is mad. Why did you say he's mad? Because he's standing in the of the streets without the uniform. He had to be mad. But when you have the uniform of a king, oh my God. Because when you stand up and say, 
enough is enough. You can say today, stop, pull over. Amen. Amen. Can we stand up for me a little bit? Let us pray now as a king. Now the king pray. How the king pray? Can you pray a little bit for a second? Can you release a word now? Somebody is here in this place. You are shocked about many things. Can you release now by believing your word? Something is happening in heaven right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I have the last word. When the word of the, the king is, there is a power. No one will stop my life. No one will stop my ministry. I declare I decree. I will succeed everywhere. Everything will fall over. In the name of Jesus. A ten thousand lives should fall. A thousand supposed to fall. I will continue my journey with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My family are protected. My wife is protected. In the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon fashion against us shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. I have the last word. 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 In the name of Jesus. You have the last word, my brother. You have the last word, my sister. Don't let the devil tell you it's over. It's not over yet. You have the last word. Keep it for them. Don't forget the Bible. Keep confessing the word. Keep confessing the word. You have the last word. Know them. You have the last word. You have the last word. Your child shall be healed. You have the last word. Your family shall be healed. You have the last word. Your husband shall be healed. You have the last word. Your, the condition of your health. You have the last word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sit down, please. Sit down, take a seat. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, what a prayer. What a prayer. Ooh. My God. Can I tell you something? It's done. Ah, you didn't understand me. It's done. Whatsoever you pray, God tell me to tell you. It's done. Ah. Oh, glory. Amen. Shall we cross over now from the king, the priest? There's a more about the king. Now, I don't know if I will finish the priest, but let us try for the next 15 minutes. Ah, it's very difficult, but let us try. Okay. How can we start? In the Bible, in the Bible that we are reading, there is a tree, especially in the Old Testament, there is a three major offices, which they were anointed in the Old Testament. The first office that God had to anoint them is the office it's not the first, but it's not in order, but there are three of them. The first one I call it the king. To be a king of Israel, you must be anointed. Saul was anointed. David was anointed, and so on and so forth. The second office was the prophet. The prophet were anointed. Elisha was anointed. The third group is the priest. The priest were also anointed. There is a slight difference between a king, uh, a priest, and a prophet. A prophet, he was was the mediator between God and his people. And the priest also 
was the mediator between God and God's people. The difference is the priest he only talk to God and come talk to you. But the priest he had to talk to the people first, understanding the people first and bring the matter to Lord. The priest speaks on behalf of the people to God. And the prophet speaks on behalf of God to people. Is it making any sense? Yeah. A prophet doesn't need to understand what you are going through. He doesn't need to hear you. He only hears God. If God says something, his job is like a spokesman. He has to translate the message to you. Whatsoever language you speak. It's like the trust is is the, the interpret. It's there to interpret, to translate whatsoever God is saying. It's like you don't understand what God said. His job is there to translate for you. When the prophet shows up, you know he's come down here to translate something for me. Do you remember in the second Kings? No, yeah, second Kings chapter 20. From 20, you go forward. There is a man called Ezekiel. He's, he's, the Bible says he's, he's a, he was the point to die. There is a prophet called Isaiah shows up to tell him, God said, you shall die. Give order to your house. The Bible says the prophet was leaving the house. He only said, he only translate, he only be as an interpreter. He said, oh, what, what was it? He was leaving the house. He just found himself in the, the courtyard, meaning in the middle of the house, before he goes out. And then the Bible says, when he was leaving the house, the prophet was, no, the king, Ezekiel, was praying to the wall. Father, no, no. The prophet did not hear. He was leaving the house. What happened? He just found himself before he leave the house. God said, Stop. Go back. Say to him, I hear your prayer and your cry. Huh? He was not there. But he can have he has the ability to translate what God saw. What this man was praying to give the message. The priest doesn't work that way. The priest needs to understand first what you are going through. And then when he receives the problem, he get into his heart. He understands your frustration. He understands what you're going through. Now he say, I understand it. I'm as a human being. I am like I'm, I'm exactly like you. Understand what you're going through. I can take now your problem to God. The same thing as Jesus Christ. He came down as a human being to understand my problem. He said, Yes, you see, yes, you did something wrong. Uh, yes, I'm a human. I understand the human being. You have to be human. You understand the human being. And you bring it to God. But this man, the prophet, he only said, You will die. Oh! No mercy, no nothing. <laughs> Can you think about it? I came to your house. Brother, I'm a prophet. I was praying to my house. God said to tell you, you will die. Give more to the material. <laughs> no mercy. That is his job. Amen. A prophet, no mercy. Mm. He always said the truth. Mm. But this man, Jesus Christ, our high priest, he has to come down to understand us, be the mediator.
mediator between God and us. To take our sins away. Jesus is not here. We are not here. And then he said to us, you are also a high priest. Like me. You have to do the same thing like me. You have to take compassion to the people. Bring it to me. Can you read the first Timothy? Chapter 2. Michael, I think you have it. Can you jump? Yeah. Oh, great, man. Look at that. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Say, For there is one God, one what? Mediator. Who can reconcile us to, reconcile us, reconcile God and humanity. The man Christ Jesus. Another word, there is one God and one priest who can reconcile God and humanity. That's the job of Jesus, to reconcile men and God. It's with the king and the priest. Question is, you are really what Do you reconcile going to God? Before the speech started, you said, I am a priest. You said, This priest is to reconcile people. And some of those who know the Lord, what do you do? The word priest has got five. I'll give you five meaning of the word priest. Michael, go back to the word priest. Uh -huh. The word priest has a great meaning. The word priest means mediator. We just found it. Mediator also means like, like a The word means conciliator. Conciliator bracket is maker. We just read to reconcile. See? The maker. To reconcile. The peacemaker. Number three is to moderate. See, the word is shocked me. I will try to find the main moderator. You see, as the, I was moderating, she is our service. So, whatever she telling you to do, you should do it. If you disobey what you say, you disobey God. And remarkably, us to kneel down. And you say, I'm going to go to the church. As soon as you refuse to kneel, I put it the master of do you oh my god do you the John chapter 2 started in and then they had a problem with the The first things, and then they give them the word, and then Jesus turned one to no water. We are really good. to one, and then what say? He said to the servant, "This one to the of." Straight to the master of The master of several who receive it is now a possibility to start to you. When all this model, 
Jesus said to me, to me that the master our God. I want to be down. I tell you to stand. What I'm a teacher. I am the master of the ceremony. If you don't like it, just accept it. Oh my God. Believe what I'm saying. Believe The first person. This one is a... Uh, Two minutes. Two minutes. I spoke to the the domain. The word when you are born again, you are born in heaven. Jesus said, I am not from beneath, I am from above. Because he was born in heaven, but you say, but no, 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 you was born very no 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 you got this day. I was spiritual. I was landed on planet Earth. Now, God is trying to say here. That is planet Earth. That is heaven. Now, he's trying to find someone who is born in heaven. He also lives on planet Earth. And that person is supposed to be between Earth and heaven. To be in the middle between Earth and heaven. Whatsoever activity is going to the heaven, it can tell those who are in Earth. How things is going on is the part of the name. That part, that people call, they are between and the other. They report to people exactly what God says. Amen. Amen. Now, the old priest said, as you see, it was what was going on in the Old Testament. Three in five minutes. Can I? Yeah. It only? Five minutes. One minute. So there. I can. Yes. Because God told me here. In the world, there's God told me. Remember, it's between to God. You have to go back. Meet you. God said, If you are in the way, it's in the media. You are the media is between people. What you call goes from there. If you are a prisoner, you have media in your hand. This one is media. Between me and who I am sending as a me has to be called if you media social media most you media representing you say is your representation you God. As a media, the media divided into groups: the verb and verb. What do you know that the verb and verb, the verb and God tried to say in the for the meat that we have. If it doesn't work in heaven, 
on his media. Technology and us for you. Whatsoever you do in your Facebook media will just God will just we are what you transmit verbally not verbally. You see body language. How do body language is what your Facebook is? Do you know your style? Your body is a medium. What's what you do with your medium? What you do? I will have to stop. I will have not to take more time. But I have to go home. Think about those two things. Whatsoever the word of the king is, there is a power. Also, the media. My phone. Speak to somebody. That you because I don't bless you. Which Christian bless you? Every day I will have the bed with uh, Boya. She always something for me. She can't be upon me. Ask me with the 